What's going on, Vol fans? What's up, SEC fans? That's right, you guessed it. The dynamic duo, the toxic twins, Catfish, and the one and only BVD. What's going on, boys and girls? Sitting kind of low. Uh -huh. We're bringing it to you live from the Volunteer Roadshow Studios in Lodi, California. We're lost in Lodi again. CCR. We were sitting here talking about this next season and kind of a lot of the unknowns and our football team coming up. We're thinking, you know, the biggest unknown in my opinion is quarterback position. We got two real viable candidates, Keller Chris, transfer from Stanford, and Garantano. And I really don't have a lot of faith in Garantano, but I put him at in the same league as Alvin Kamara with, uh, maybe he was just underutilized, but I think he's got a heart of a line. One of the things that impressed me the most was when he said all he's wanted to do is play football in the SEC. And that, you know, he's got a lot of heart there. Who do you think should be our starting quarterback? What do you think about our quarterback situation right now? Coming from a kid from up north, from Jersey, hearing uh, hearing Garantano say that, it's pretty pretty special, you know. I mean, that's it's not unique anymore because kids all over the country they want to play for SEC teams if they can, if they've got the goods. Um, the thing I like, and I think we discussed this in my video the other day, the quarterback thing, but we'll, we'll talk a little more about it. Uh, the thing that uh, I like most about Garantano is his toughness. That dude took an ass whooping. He sure did. Last year. Um, and he's probably going to take one again this year, whether he's the starter or the backup. But uh, what was the question? Yeah, start? what do you think about our quarterback situation? There is uh, a lot of unknowns. It's a per pretty precarious situation for dang sure. Um, it'd be nice if we had a Tua and Jalen Hurts coming back, you know, so a situation like that where we didn't have to worry about it. Um, but instead, it's kind of like that fly that we've both been trying to kill what Garantano is going to be like running around like a fly but yeah. I you know I'm not that worried about it I mean it, it's going to be what it's going to be you know like I told you the other day I'm more worried about who's going to protect whoever's back there yeah. but I am to be honest with you I'm really curious to see what Chris has got you know a gunslinger from the Pac-12 all right bring it we need something like that so he's got a pretty good record there I mean he's not Got the greatest completion percentage, at averaging around 55% in the season and a half he played. And he had, um, obviously, some good decision-making abilities because he's had 10 touchdowns to two interceptions in 2016, which is pretty respectable. And I think I've read somewhere where he was 11-2 and two as a starter. Yeah, but his, his, uh, his career out there was kind of broken up. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know that he had – and you guys – we should probably should have looked this up, but I don't think he's had a complete season as the no. starter. I think it's all been broken up. Um, he may not get a complete season this year. We'll find out. That's for sure. Well, I'm interested to see what y'all think. Who do y'all think is going to be our starter when we play West Virginia? Put in the comment section what you think about our quarterback situation. Both – quarterbacks are really starting out at zero with a new coach, so I don't think there's one favorite, even though Garantano's a, a returning player. I think they're going to both be on the same uh, the same peg on the totem pole, and I just read an article where they said that uh, Garantano was really impressing a lot of people out there at the Manning Passing Academy here a couple of days ago, so who knows? But I don't know that he'll be the greatest quarterback in, you know, Tennessee history. He's not going to be a Heath Shuler or Peyton Manning. If he just stays healthy and, yeah. you know, is able to able to get a seven or eight wins, whoever starts. I, I think we're going to a bowl. I've got us at seven and five and possibly eight and four. But the quarterback's position is, is where it's won and lost a lot of times, especially now. And 
I'm thinking back at all the great quarterbacks we've had over the years. You Ooh, know. If, if, if I said catfish, here's a gun pointed to your head or, you know, a cigarette knocked out of your mouth, uh, who would be your top five your, or your, your Mount Rushmore plus one of Tennessee quarterbacks? Well, my favorite, if you're going by greatest or favorite, favorite, yeah, Let's go with favorite. Your personal. My personal favorite, personal. and and uh, you can't bash somebody for their favorite because no. their favorites are favorite. It's, Unless it's a really boneheaded favorite. But. Well, my number one is Heath Schuler. Um, I would have Manning at by, just behind him at number two, and my number three, and this is only because he's the first quarterback that I remember. I was about nine or ten years old when when Notre Dame came to Neyland Stadium in, in 79 and was supposed to kick our butt from all the way up and down the Tennessee River, and we beat them. They didn't. Jimmy Streeter. I got him at number three. Um, Tony Robinson. What do you think about him and Andy Kelly? I mean, we were T-Rob was, I mean, he was the man. It's a shame you Alabama bastards tore his knee up. Yeah, that's pretty low down. That was. You won't catch. You won't catch Tennessee injuring knees or anything mm -hmm. like that. And 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 if it was to happen, you'd never see our fans, you know, making blight of it or yeah. you know anybody that would accuse us of that can. But that season turned out pretty dang good for it us, did. didn't it? Yeah, nice. Sugar Bowl beat Miami. Way to pull me out of that one. I was headed down a dusty road there. Well, it turned out pretty good. Daryl Dickey. Daryl Dickey. Who in the hell is Daryl Dickey? There was a lot of that going on back then. But you didn't finish your top five, did you? You ain't getting out of this. Schuler, Manning, Streeter, Tony Robinson, and either Andy Kelly or Casey Clawson. That's my one. What's yours? Yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard to nail down a top five, but Shuler, I think everybody knows Shuler was my favorite. I wish he'd have stayed one more season, though. He oh, needed no, to. Man. Good Lord. What what might have been? What might have been? Um, We'd man, have beaten Florida in 94, by God, wouldn't you? I promise you that. <laughs> Manning at two, uh, T-Rob at three. Um, four and five is when it starts getting a little bit tougher. Um, but I'm, I'm like Catfish, you know. I remember the first quarterback that I ever saw play in an orange jersey, and it was Alan Cockrell uh, at that 1980 Pittsburgh game mm -hmm. that we got hammered in. Uh, and uh, number five, this is going to surprise a lot of people, Joshua Dobbs. I love that kid. For real? I love that kid. Come on, man. Yeah. What the beep is that? Um <laughs> Full metal jacket reference. I guess if you're thinking, you know, he's not Dobbs. Man, Dobbs was the man. Yes. All right, let's, yeah. uh, let's just let's X-ray that. You, for when a you when bit. you think about his coach and what he was able to accomplish with his coach, yeah, yeah I, I might even put him on my top five because that's pretty spectacular. When you did all that with Butch Jones, Dobbs got nailed for his long passing ability or lack thereof, his accuracy. Georgia fans will tell you a little bit of something about his accuracy on long-range passes. But he, man, dude, look, Joshua Dobbs was, if you're a Tennessee fan and he's not at least in your top ten, even you old guys like us, I think there's something wrong with you because that kid was, he was a winner. Like Casey Clawson, he just, given everything that he had around him or didn't have around him, the dude was, I mean, he was a straight winner on and off the field and how many of you other guys out there of other teams can say your quarterback's going to be a friggin' astronaut someday you know rocket or, scientists. or building the spaceships for the rock for the astronauts but, it's definitely a smart youngin yeah not as smart as mine but yeah, yeah. before we wrap this up i'm kind of behind on announcing the winners of my Tiki Totems from an SEC team of your choice, so I'm going to name two of them. And, and what the hell is that? You have to be a subscriber to my channel, and I've got Right to Vape professional over here. and Nathan Corsi. Sorry. So, either one of y'all watching this, you have one week to respond 
with your name and address to volunteer roadshow at gmail and I'll say get them you. again because I kind of drowned you out there a little bit. Say their names again in case they didn't hear you. Before we get out of here, I've been I'm kind of behind on my uh, naming the winners of my tiki totems. I'm supposed to do five of them, so I'm gonna name two real quick. Um, you got one week to respond to with your name and address to volunteer roadshow at gmail, and that's right to vape. And Nathan Corsi. Send me your name and address, and I'll get you out an SEC team of your choice, a Tiki Totem, right out to you. So I guess that's all we got. So thanks for tuning in. Go Vols. Screw y'all. We're going 15 and 0. I promise you that.